All right, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it would be impossible for me to count the number of times that I have heard people claim, the Mass is so boring. Perhaps they are focused on the repetitive aspects of the ritual. It's always the same thing, right? Day after day, week after week, Mass after Mass, there's the same structure, the same flow, and if you focus only on the repeated aspects, the Mass might be boring. I think that that's how it would be with people. If all we saw when we looked at one another was skeletons, we didn't see the flesh, we didn't see the hair, we didn't see the facial features, we just saw skeletons, we would all pretty much be alike. But because we have a little bit of flesh, some more, some less, a little bit of hair, some more, some less, these are the things that make us interesting. So perhaps the bored people are not able to recognize the great variety that the church already gives in her liturgical expression. Now note I say the church because I would maintain that if we're not following what the church gives us in the celebration of the Mass, if we're doing our own thing, then we're never really coming to understand the liturgy as it's given. Perhaps to the board, a phrase like liturgical variety sounds like an oxymoron. So let's find out. Our focus is what the church gives. I'm not going to offer any ideas about innovation. We're going to look at what's already there in the church's liturgy. In a course designed around the question of variety, I want it to be clear that this is not a course in comparative liturgy. We're not going to take the liturgies of the East and compare them to the liturgies of the West. We're looking at variations within the Roman rite itself. The question really is, what kind of variety is given? What kind of variety is included? And more specifically, what kind of variety is inscribed in the liturgy that the church herself provides? So let's begin by recalling that one of the principal methods of the Liturgical Institute is the sacramental approach. That is fundamentally, uh, the sacramental approach is fundamentally the idea that what we know comes to us through our senses And what we perceive through our senses is meant to connect us to another reality, an ultimate reality that we do not immediately perceive, right? You hear something, you see something, you smell something, you touch something, you taste something, and it means the hidden mysterious reality of God in the end. We want to make connections between the perceptible sign and the reality that is God. Uh, That's why this sign is up here. This was a part of a poem from uh, one of my uh, classmates when I was in the seminary. He said, and this is just a little piece of the whole thing. We drink wildly like men wanting distance from their senses. We drink wildly like men wanting distance from their senses. I would say in the liturgical realm, it's just the opposite. We don't want distance from our perceptions. We want to engage them fully, okay? So it's the contrary 
of we drink wildly. We should drink wildly of the liturgy, but to engage it. All right, I want to 